I'm going to introduce um, Dr. Holt. Um, and she has been at UC Davis for quite a while. She got her bachelor's degree in physiology, and then she got her PhD in nutritional um, biology. She, um, she's, I've worked with her for many years. One of the things that I think you should know about her is that if you have heard about what Ralph was mentioning, these cocoa flavanols and their influence on cardiovascular health, Dr. Holt actually um, did a lot of the human clinical research that underpinned that, um, that scientific uh, consensus that these things are, are quite valuable for cardiovascular health. So she's made quite an impact in the world in that regard. Just building on what Scott was talking about in terms of the whole food approach that, that Sonoma Ceuticals is taking, um, Dr. Holt, is uh, her, her research focuses on dietary components from whole foods on metabolism and physiologic response while striving to understand how these foods and their components respond within, within a diet. And in, a, in an ozempic world now, um, which is all about cardio metabolic health. Actually, Dr. Holt has done as much as anyone and continues to do great research on how whole foods and the dietary components within them actually influence cardiometabolic health. So super timely topic given what's going on in the world. And lastly, as she comes up to take the mic, um, Dr. Holt was the lead author on that Journal of Agricultural and Food Chemistry um, article that we've referred to a number of times. So with that, it's a real pleasure to have Dr. Holt um, talk with us. Thank you. Thank you, Harold, for that wonderful introduction. And as Harold mentions, I'm here, or as he, we've talked about, this is a team of teams we're using here for the Chardonnay Mark, or study of Chardonnay Mark. Um, Ralph just gave a re wonderful presentation on the sensory team and their research. Um, I'm here representing the health research team, which includes research from myself in the Department of Nutrition, and also from the laboratories of Dr. Daniela Barile and um, Selena Wong from Food Science and Technology. Let me see if I could get this to work. Woohoo! <laughs> and as Harold has mentioned, we have just, I, I guess exactly almost a year ago, published this um, deep, um, intense review on um, the potential of Chardonnay Mark on, um, in health in terms of that trifecta of both sensory um, health impacts, but still um, this is in a sustainable um, food system. And so if you want a little more detail on the natural food um, product chemistry, also some of um, more details of the sensory attributes that um, Ralph had just discussed about, um, please refer to this review. What we did um, review um, in, in, in that um, um, review is that, importantly, Chardonnay Mark has a number of bioactives that are not defined as essential nutrients, yet they can have considerable impact on cardiometabolic health. Um, as we had outlined, the intake of grape products, such as the berries themselves, wine, freeze-dried um, powders, and the mark itself, have a number of positive impacts on cardiometabolic health that are outlined above, um, which I will, um, we have also have studied um, in a, a pilot trial um, currently being done. So potential bioactives of interest within the Chardonnay mark, as um, um, Scott had mentioned, come from the skin and the seeds. And this can include phenolics and a number of complex carbohydrates. And bringing up the French paradox again, when discussing these great bioactives, it's important to note that the key difference between red and white wines is the extent of the extraction of those bioactives into the wine itself. So therefore, the so-called French paradox, to give you a little more detail, was the observation of an inverse association between the increasing fat, fat intake from dairy but, also, but still having a lower cardiovascular mortality in the French population. The authors at that time hypothesized that it was the alcohol content, which is known to have an increase in your good cholesterol or HDL cholesterol. But they also demonstrated that higher intakes of alcohol were associated with reduction of um, the activation of platelets, which is your key cell that um, clots and also is involved um, in a heart attack. 
So it wasn't until the following year that researchers from UC Davis, so it's our fault, I guess you could say, uh, first proposed that the apparent French paradox may not only be due to the alcohol content of um, wines, but the phenolic content. And that's where we kind of came about that red wine was healthier. However, science kind of tells another tale. Because, yeah, it's natural products such as flavanols with known health benefits that we now have, um, like I said, studying cocoa flavanols, known are beneficial over the past few decades, are actually present in similar, if not greater, amounts in the skin and seeds of white varietals compared to that of the red varietals. And you see that outlined here in red in which the seeds of um, Chardonnay are almost double the amount in total flavanols. And just to give you a little detail why this is important, that intersection um, between the gut, health, and brain, is that I want to introduce you to the concept of how diet affects the whole body, which is a, a big research focus of mine. First, through the direct impacts of nutrients or bioactives upon absorption in the gut, and then into the circulation. And secondarily, through its impact and interaction with the microorganisms living within us, and this is, which are called, known collectively as the microbiota. In the past dec decade, we have had an increased appreciation of the impact of a healthy diet on the microbiome. This includes the, uh, the um, maintenance of commensal or beneficial bacteria, the promotion of healthy um, or healthy balance of micro microbiome-derived metabolites that they produce from dietary components, along with the maintenance of gut and immune health and function. Moreover, through the secretion of hormones, dietary components, and microbial-produced metabolites, these all work together so that the gut, brain, and cardiovascular systems communicate with one another in order to maintain physiologic homeostasis. Oopsie. Therefore, it's important to understand that whole foods and diets provide a complex array of nutrients and natural products that can impact health in a multitude of ways. Therefore, to best understand the impacts of food or an ingredient on health and within a dietary pattern, that food needs to be characterized, which is what we're currently working on. So for Chardonnay Mark, our team's research to date has focused on characterizing the phenolics and fiber. And just a few definitions here. Total fiber consists of non-digestible carbohydrate and ligand. So diets poor in fiber lead to reduced diversity of the gut microbial populations and, sh and have produced a shift in microbial metabolite production that reduces the protective um, layer within the gut, or mucin, increases gastrointestinal permeability and also gastrointestinal inflammation and also systemic inflammation as well. So overall, the prebiotic activity of fiber is dependent on its structure, with the breakdown of fiber into monosaccharide units that's dependent on the specific bacteria population and specific genes of that bacteria. Therefore, a higher diversity of monosaccharides also translates into a diverse commensal bacterial population. So oligosaccharides are a type of non-digestible carbohydrate that have a low degree of polymerization, defined as 3 to 15 monosaccharide units, yet are a diverse class of compounds that can be fermented by the select bacterial species. So these, as um, Harold had previously mentioned, and I believe Scott as well, they are naturally presented in milk or mammal, mammal milk and in many plants after synthesis or hydro, uh, hydrolysis of high, higher polysaccharides or glycolipids and proteins. And then the, the, Neo, the Barilla lab is what they have done is using advanced um, analytical techniques, they have characterized these um, monosaccharides. They've done extensive work on this, um, particularly from the Chardonnay mark, in order to assess their potential health benefits. Uh, pictured here, um, you can see the uh, mass spec pro profile of the oligosaccharides. Um, to date, they have found over 40 unique oligosaccharides, and then with this one sample, you can see taller peaks. These indicates that oligosaccharides are of higher abundance or more present within any, um, any uh, particular oligosaccharide mark sample. 
And the most abundant of these oligosaccharides tend to contain a combination of hexose and pentose, which may be gen generated from a certain polysaccharide found in the cell wall of um, grapes called arubinoglactin, if I didn't butcher that too much. <laughs> So this is important as, a beneficial, as beneficial bacteria, such bif as um, bifidobacterium, have been reported to utilize oligosaccharides derived from arubinoglactins, making these oligosaccharides particularly interesting for potential prebiotic applications. And indeed, work um, performed by Dr. Um, Ashita Shah, also at Food um, Science and Technology Department, um, demonstrated that a number of oligosaccharides isolated from the Chardonnay mark can be utilized by the commensal or beneficial bacteria, such as bifidobacteria and lactobacilli, but not by the pathogenic bacteria which was also demonstrated by analyzing the spent media. You can see um, this graph on the lower right-hand corner and the arrows. So analyzing the um, spent media via mass spectrometry, they could show a selective consumption of these oligosaccharides by the bacteria. And in addition to oligosaccharides, the Wang Rang lab have also analyzed several varietals for their phenolic content to include the flavin thriols. So while pictured on the left-hand side is several varietals being measured for their epicatechin and catechin content, and these were all um, harvested in 2021. So you can see that all varietals have some sort of um, amounts of epicatechin and catechin, but what's kind of exciting is the two green and blue bars in the left panel on the right-hand side that represents Chardonnay Mark. And you can see that um, it is um, you, uh, higher in epicatechin and catechin. And in the left panel are a number of procyanidins, which are basically units of epicatechin and catechin. Um, they're um, larger um, known as procyanidins, they're polyphenols that tend not to be absorbed, but um, may be consumed by the um, bacteria in the lower gut. But what was interesting is that for Chardonnay Mark, which is that blue bar on the right panel, the first one there, it's particularly enriched in procyanidin B1, which is a dimer of, of catechin and epicatechin. And why does this matter? Mainly because the flavanols are of a considerable interest. As in just the last year, an expert panel um, convened to develop dietary recommendations for the daily intake of flavin thriols. As Harold mentioned, after decades of research of cocoa flavanol intake on cardiometabolic health, we now have substantial enough research to actually propose a dietary recommendation for a dietary bioactive, and that has not been done before. So this positions upcycle foods, such as Chardonnay Mark, as a valuable ingredient, particularly as a source of flavin thriols, to aid individuals in obtaining that dietary recommended level, which is right now potentially set at 400 to 600 milligrams per day. And I've been talking about Chardonnay Mark flavanols in isolation, or these bioactives in isolation. As we move forward with assessing their potential health impacts of um, these foods, we need to appreciate that these foods are in a complex food matrix. And, and, and their nutrient and bioactive composition, as well as their interactive effects with one another, need to be determined. For both oligosaccharides and phenolics, to include polyphenols such as the flavin thriols, they're not found in isolation with food, but um, also can also be bound to proteins, lipids, and polysaccharides. So when focusing on these bioactives, we need to understand that under physiologic conditions, they may first be released from the matrix and then absorbed in the upper gut. However, they could also be um, bound and moved to the lower gut, where they are um, exposed to the bacterial populations and also can be fermented as other indigestible substrates by the gut microbiota. These non-extractable phenolic acids that we call, or NEPA, are typically not captured in most food an analyses that use particularly use solvent-based extracts. Instead, you need to do additional extraction steps, such as with aqueous solvents that capture them. 
So the Wang Lab has been doing this type of work and measuring the extractable and the non-extractable phenolics. As pictured here, the non-extractable phenolics can re represent a um, substantial portion of the phenolic acids within the mark. And so it may contribute to the uh, additional bioactivity of the mark that we have yet um, to determine. Yet adding further complexity when assessing the potential health effects of um, these foods, we also need to keep in mind that even the extractable phenolic acids can have impacts on the gut microbiota and vice versa. Pictured here is the 24-hour metabolism of epicatechin, um, demonstrating the initial absorption and associated primary metabolites within two hours of intake. That's represented by the first peak here. It is also followed by the second peak you see that's a little shorter and broader. This um, occurs about six hours later after intake, and it represents the presence of microbial-derived metabolites from epicatechin. And so these were not either absorbed or they were recirculated into the gut through to the enterobiliary hepatic circulation. And the physiologic effects of this metabolism, which is similar for a number of phenolics, has been observed with both blueberry and cocoa powder intake, where you see an initial peak at that one or two hour time point, which represents the initial um, um, uptake from the gut in the circulation. Uh, and then it's followed by, six hours later, an increase in vascular function, which also re potentially represents the increase of um, vascular function after the presence and the circulation of the secondary microbial-derived metabolites. So going into our own research, we have observed a similar response. So in our current pilot trial, um, we um, provided three healthy mill adults a beverage containing 7.5 grams of a high flavanol cocoa, providing 563 milligrams of flavanols. In addition, in that beverage, we added 4.5 grams of Chardonnay Mark, providing an additional 160 milligrams of flavanols, essentially for a total of 722 milligrams of flavanols. We observed a significant increase, represented in the right panel here, of um, vas microvascular function as measured by the Framingham Reactive Hyperemia Index, which is a measure of microvascular function, but also is related to cardiovascular risk factors. What's interesting is you're still seeing that two-hour time point, the increase in vascular function, and it also at that six-hour time point. So it's, we're seeing both the primary metabolism and response potentially six hours later when you have the presence of the gut microbial metabolites. In addition, we have also observed um, an increase in um, what's known as prostacycling levels after the intake of 220 milligrams of flavanols from chocolate. So that's the panel on the left-hand side. Um, this prostanoid is known for both its vasodilatory effects, so it helps increase its vascular function, and it also has antiplatelet effects. So that initial French paradox um, study I was showing you uh, as it acts sort of like an aspirin. We have also observed a decrease in platelet reactivity representing the um, white bright panel two and six hours after the same intake of the chocolate. And we're glad to, so far, see confirmatory data with the same um, cocoa and Mark um, beverage providing 722 milligrams of flavanols. And that so far we're seeing a reduction in um, collagen-stimulated platelet aggregation um, six hours after intake of that be beverage. So although still preliminary, this initial data set suggests of differential effects occurring between two and six hours after the intake of um, cocoa flavanols with Chardonnay Mark. So we aim to further explore what this potential is going on between that differential effect. And in summary, Chardonnay Mark is a rich source of number of bioactives to include phenolics and oligosaccharides that can positively impact both cardiovascular and gut health. 
So preliminary results today suggest that incorporation of well vine Chardonnay Mark as a food ingredient may positively impact cardiometabolic and gut health, and we look forward to um, continual research on, on that end. And like I said, this is the team and team approach. I represent the health team which um, is myself and Dr. Keene from the Department of Nutrition, and also a number of members of the Food Science and Technology from the Barilla and um, Wang Laboratories. Thank you.